Wait a minute. Time for truth. You have their signal, but you are not Artemis Entity. Yeah, I know, I know. Let me tell them the truth. Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and this is our fresh playthrough that we started with the 4.0 update in No Man's Sky. In the last episode, we built our hyperdrive. We got everything ready to go. So now all we have to do is go to a new system to find our benefactor. And again, if you want to see your current objective, Always go into that pause menu, look at the uh, log right here, and this will give you all the different mich missions you have going on right now. We have to locate our benefactor. So, let's head back into the menu right here. And this is the galaxy map. So this is anywhere you want to go. Every single dot, every star out here is a system you can go to and explore if you want to. Now, I love that they give you like a direction like you can go follow this golden line right here and that'll get you there but if you want to you don't have to follow this line at any point you can just say you know what i want to explore so if you press b on your controller or o if you're on playstation you can now unlock it so now you can go anywhere you can within reason my my starship is not very upgraded so you can't go too far because it's out of my range I, my cadmium i don't have a cadmium drive so there's going to be limitations on where you can go because of my my ship. But once I get this thing fully upgraded, we are good to go. So, you know what? I, I always like to head to one system. We know that's a good one. We're going to head back to our original system that we started out in. You know what? Actually, yeah, yeah. We're going to do our original system. It's a GEC system. We've already been here. But this is where I like to go. And as soon as you land in here, you should get a call to kind of progress the storyline a little bit. Let's see. Paradise Planet. I still can't believe there's a Paradise Planet right here. Where's our... Uh... Oh, there it is right there. Unknown source. Incoming transmission. Source unknown. You are not alone. Please identify yourself. I'm... And it cuts out. I'm going to identify myself. You left me. Why did you? I say, I don't, I didn't do that. I didn't leave you. Of course you'd say that. Of course you would. Just like all the others. Okay. Who, uh, what are you, what others are you talking about? There is no reply. The communicator falls silent, though the channel remains open. So now we know where they're at. And a lot of people ask, do, does your uh, choices matter? Like when they have the text interchange like that? do the uh your your selections change the story it does not change the story not not in the grand scheme of things you can choose different things and they will respond to your uh your your chosen thing but it's not going to change the story like you can't get a whole different ending by choosing a different uh text so don't worry about like changing it getting a good or a bad ending or anything like that you you get to choose like kind of how you respond and they will respond back to you, but again, overall, not changing the story. The story doesn't, like, go good or bad. You don't get a good or bad ending. You get the ending of No Man's Sky or the ending of the storyline. No Man's Sky, as a game, doesn't really end so far. It just kind of the story finishes, and then you can go out and explore because you can explore, you can build, you can do all kinds of stuff. So let's see what's going on with the stranger's coordinates. Oh, Lord, I can't even speak today. I am a little bit tired. I've been playing uh, over on Twitch for multiple hours every day. So my voice is kind of sore a little bit. That's all right, though, guys. I love playing No Man's Sky. I mean, seriously, I have played nonstop for like six, seven hours every day since the update came out. And it's freaking amazing. I love the new update. We're going to land right here. Now, let's see. Again, we're going to do our target sweeper. We know that's a, this direction. That's okay. Oh, oxygen. We'll take that. Hey, come on. Okay, fine. I guess I'm not going to take the oxygen. I'm going to scan this plant to get it out of my way. Look at that. 41,000. Those scanner upgrades are paying off, you guys. Seriously. If you're going to invest in early upgrades, the scanner is a really good option in the beginning. 
I mean, you want to you wanna upgrade everything, but when you're first starting out, that scanner will help you make a ton of money. All right. And again, let's scan everything, make some money here. 36,000. So let's see if we got any animals, you know, that we can make a ton of money off of. Look at this thing. What is that? Mushrooms? 109,000 for that scan. Man, I'm feeling good. All right. So we know it's in this direction. And I mean, you don't have to scan everything. I would always recommend you do it, but you don't have to, you know. You can just run and get it done if you want to. It benefits you, though. Benefits you a lot to scan all this stuff. Look at this. What is going on? We got some cool animals on this planet. That is pretty freaking awesome. All right. Let's stop scanning stuff. Let's actually get going to where we need to go. Over here, 200 feet. 170. And I like to run and just pull up my uh, visor every once in a while just to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Because target sweep is a love-hate relationship. I like that they're adding new features. I hate that they added a target sweeper to the game. <laughs> it's so frustrating. It feels like it's just there to slow you down. There's nothing fun about it. There's no, like, you know, cool aspect to it other than just slowing you down. Unknown signal. Bzz, bzz. There are no life si or no signs of life. There is only the static of a broken communicator. Well, what's going on here? Whatever message was once here has been scrambled beyond recovery. All I extract is the pilot's name, Artemis. Whoever they were, they are long gone. The only other uncorrupted data is a set of plans that upgrade for my mining beam. Now I have an advanced mining beam. Yes, very awesome. And you can make that because we do have a, a few wiring looms. We did buy that earlier. And so the advanced mining laser is really, really good stuff because it lets you mine more advanced materials. So we need one hermetic seal and one carbon nanotube. So let's make those real quick. This is definitely a, a thing you want to make. And again, you don't have to worry about it. If you make it and you don't like it, you can take it out. You can move it, whatever you want to do. So let's install that. <coughs> None. Done. And two wiring them. And so, if you, like, if you install something, anything, you don't have to install, you know, any particular item. But if you're like, hey, look, I got, I got no room. I need to move it. I can move it around by hitting the X button, and I can move it to a different spot. Or, if I need to remove it, like, I don't want this one, I want something else. Like, hey, I have a, a good upgrade here, but I don't want to keep it, right? I want to move it. All you have to do is hit Y on your uh, controller, or triangle if you're on playstation and it picks up and packages the uh inventory the upgrade so now it can go in your general inventory you can just sit there or your cargo now it's called cargo good lord but i keep forgetting sorry guys but there you go so now i made some more room now if you ever want to put it back on there boom install it you can also use that to move it to another multi-tool so if i ever upgrade my multi-tools and i want to move all these upgrades i could just totally store these and then switch to my other multi-tool and install it in the new multi-tool. It's very, very cool. It works for all of your uh, upgrades. So if you have a ship, you want to do that too. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. If you have a freighter. You could totally do that. We don't get new suits, so you're not going to be doing it for a suit. But you know what I mean. All right. Search for clues about Artemis on this and other worlds. What? Okay. Well, we got this. Let's see if we can get some more upgrades over here. Got to get these upgrades. Oh, we got nanites. That's fine, though. Nanites are good still, right? Terrain manipulator. We got to get our buried tech. That way we can sell it for money. And you can always check these cool boxes for materials. Always, always a good thing. Very, very awesome. So we now we have that. Let's call in my ship. So we, we gotten a lot of stuff here. Yeah, we got some stuff. We're going to need to get some more uh, chromatic metal. We're going to need to get some more stuff in here. But for now, let's take off. I think that if we follow the storyline, you know, if we fly around a little bit, we should be able to access it. Here we go. It tells you go to the stars. Okay, I'm going to go to the stars real quick. Here we go. Another one. 
Artemis Entity, we received your signal. Is it first? Is it last? Wait a minute. Time for truth. You have their signal, but you are not Artemis Entity. Yeah, I know, I know. Let me tell them the truth. Your signal is familiar to Nada. We have been in contact before, I think. This would be a good time to come aboard. Yes, a proper introduction to our home. So now we can access the Space Anomaly. This is a very important area, a very important thing in No Man's Sky. This is like the multiplayer hub and also like the marketplace that you can call in at any time you want. So once you go through the tutorial, once you talk to, you know, Nada and Polo and some of the other travelers on the Space Anomaly, you're able to call it in wherever you want. You know, any other system you want to go to. There you go, you can call them in. This is such a good area and it's an important area. We can get a lot of good upgrades here. So, and speaking of upgrades, guys, if you have not claimed any of your Twitch drops, I know some people are asking about, hey, how do I get it in the game? It's gonna be right over here. This is the Quicksilver robot. He will have a whole bunch of stuff. So you see how I have uh, exotic items from Quicksilver? Where can I earn it? Collect expedition rewards. You can also collect your Twitch rewards right here. So any rewards, any drops you got from Twitch will be right here. Look at all these rewards. I got them all. All of them. I love it. So there you go. And I mean, you can also use your Quicksilver if you've earned mission, you know, earned Quicksilver during missions. You can also unlock them here as well. Very, very awesome. I love that. And then we have the Nexus Cube right here. This is where you get multiplayer missions. And I say multiplayer missions, you don't have to do multi, or you don't have to do them in multiplayer. Oh yeah, we have to go do our uh, tutorial first, but this is where you would get your missions. You can do them in multiplayer, but it's not a requirement. You don't have to do them. I always do mine in solo, unless I'm um, streaming and I'm playing with all of you guys. So let's get over here. Let's talk to Nada. I am Priest Entity Nada, Divergent Corvax. Welcome up to our anomaly. Our home here is pleasant, yes? Polo's own design, a perfect bubble. Beyond the Sentinels, beyond the Vengeful Corvax. Nada, watch as time come and go. What about Artemis, guys? What do you guys know? A traveler entity. Perhaps they are known to you. I do not know their number. Nada does not care to think about iterations as numbers. They were lost to us. Highly improbable. Our anomaly is lost to the Sentinels, but none should be lost to the anomaly basically hidden from the anomaly. The Corvex watches me. There is patience, an organic tilt to the way they hold their metal shell. Well, what about you, buddy? Nada awoke with the death of the Corvex Prime. Could not understand why such things happened. Why were we alone? Now I am divergent. The convergence do not see through my eyes. So he's not connected to all the other Corvex. Nada is not alone anymore. Nada is with Polo Friend. Now, many other friends visit all the other travelers. Our convergence is small, but Nada is happy. Nada's carapace pulses with a gentle light. There is, no there is something familiar about them. So we've met them before. What about Polo? Polo's my favorite character. Polo friend found Nada. Found my signal. Nada is safe. Now, Nada finds other signals and makes others safe. There we go. Not going around saving travelers. This station has been calling to me since I awoke on the planet. Perhaps it called to Artemis as well. Yeah. What about the space station? Beyond what is outside, our anomaly wanders free. Free like Nada to observe and to search. The Sentinels, the Atlas, they do not care for this place. I feel their eyes hunting us. Nada watches me, judging my reactions as they speak. Speak with Polo, friend, Traveler. Perhaps they might know more about missing Artemis. They perceive things more clearly than Nada, because Polo's awesome, that's why. Polo is our cool Gek guy. He's the one who built the Space Anomaly. He saved, you know, that's what... Polo is the unspoken, like, hero in this whole game. He saved Nada, he built the Anomaly. This guy's just kicking butt and taking names. Friends everywhere, if only you know where to look. Friends in all shapes, all sizes, and all places, because frickin' Polo, I love him. Artemis friend, you are where they should be. 
does not seem possible, but all things are possible, such is the universe. Okay, Polo, calm down. We will find them, no doubt. There is always a signal, always a trace. Well, how? How do I find Artemis? Our home will see to it. When you leave, you will not be where you were. You will be closer. Or maybe not. Discovery is exciting. <laughs> okay. Yo, yo. Yo, yo, amped up. Like, what are we going to teleport somewhere? Dang it. Get me all amped up. Before you leave, perhaps some time with our other friends. Spend some time with our other friends. We all help each other here. So now we have to go meet the other uh, travelers on the Space Anomaly. Now, we don't have to meet all of them. We just have to meet the more important, the ones that have a, uh, a bigger role on the Space Anomaly. So... The first one I always go to is Helios. He is like the old uh, like traveler who just never leaves the space anomaly. He's too old to go. But he loves to hear about all of your adventures. And he will pay you if you talk to him about it. Ah, young one. You who still roam the boundaries of this universe. How I envy you. My time out in reality has long passed. But I miss it greatly. Perhaps you might help an old soul and share the things you've seen. I yearn for the stars and for the glory of discovery. So every day it'll change. So today he wants me to give him data on planets. Another day he might for an he might ask for animal data or plant data or mineral data or whatever. He will ask for different types of data every single day. Thank you, little one. You have no idea what this means to me. Please take these nanites. They are nothing, but they are all I have for now. And if... And again, he asked for uh, planets this time. If I go out and I scan more planets, I can come back like tomorrow or the next day or, you know, a week from now. Whenever he asks for your planet data or your plant data or your animal data, you can increase it. You give it. You only give him what you know right now. So if I go out and I find a hundred more planets next week, I can give him more data. So you can always give him more data. And then we have Aries over here. Traveler hopes to make progress. Traveler tests themselves. I will help and exchange progress for progress. Or wealth, perhaps. Experience or materials. Both valid today. Living pearls. So this is almost the same as uh, Helios. Except for Ares will ask for a, a special item. And if you give them, it's never useful. I've never seen it to where you get a lot of nanites for it. But like if I give him one living pearl, he might give me five nanites. It's up to you. If you have a whole bunch, you can give it to them. It's not worth it in my experience. It's always a really low number. It's randomized. So sometimes it'll be five. Sometimes it'll be 10. You'll get a little bit of the uh, nanites for that. But Ares also has an upgrade shop. <coughs> Basic selection only. Seek space stations for grand selection. So he will only have a B and a C level. He's only going to have the really basics. But the the benefit is he has every upgrade upgrade you can imagine so it's not just suit upgrades he also has ship upgrades he also has exocraft upgrades he has multi-tool upgrades he has all the upgrades but they're not the best he gives you the c and the b's nothing you know he doesn't give you all the good stuff so if you're really hurting you really want to get upgrades in here go for it we will be using this later on but we're going to use it for as an exploit rather than actually using the upgrade so we're not gonna actually use the upgrades but we'll get there when we get there you are ready to exchange the other thing you can do is transmit your milestone data that is like every time you kill a sentinel or every time you uh you upgrade your milestones let me back out and show you the milestones so in your pause menu under your catalogs you have your journey milestones as you increase these you will earn respect from Ares, and he will give you nanites so we can go through and we can kind of see where we're at. Overall journey, we're a two star. You know, we have our different ones for like talking to aliens, learning words, scanning plant, uh, animals, uh, warping with our warp drive. We also have survival milestones. So I like walking around on foot, units accrued. So, you know, making money, trading, extreme survival, surviving on extreme planets, killing sentinels, ships, hunting down pirates. They give you a milestone for everything and as you increase these you will get more and more nanites from Ares. so let us let's turn in what we have so far and see how many nanites we get transit mi milestone data we just got 550 nanites we just made 550 nanites just for you know playing the game and 
being awesome. I love it. And then we have the marketplace in the back. This is the really important area. So they mark the exosuit over there, but we're going to start over here. This is the exo craft. So the vehicles in the game, you can buy upgrades from Perseus. And then we also have the uh, blueprint area, the synthesis laboratory. This is how you can learn all the blueprints from like, you can go get these for free in the factory as well. Or you can learn these as you progress the story, they will unlock. So don't worry about it. But if you want to get ahead or you're impatient, you're like, look, I just want to get it done. You can come in here and you can pay nanites in order to unlock it faster. Then the storyline will progress for you. There's also a secondary page. Look at all of this. Look at all that. So there's a ton to unlock. You're going to be spending thousands and thousands of nanites if you want to unlock all of this. I would always recommend just play the story and it will unlock, you know, slowly but surely it will unlock. Then we have our multi-tool upgrade guy. So all of these shops will give you blueprints. These are things you can install and it does not count as an upgrade. It counts as a blueprint. So like my barrel ionizer, this is for my bolt caster. I can have a bolt caster and then I can increase it to with a, uh, I can upgrade it with a bol uh, barrel ionizer and a ricochet module. Those are two upgrades that don't count against my normal ones. Blueprints do not count against your normal upgrades. You know, so you can get all kinds of stuff. You can get an optical drill. There you go. You can get a waveform recycler and a survey device. There's tons of upgrades in here. But again, they're going to cost nanites. So be prepared. Then on this side, we have the exosuit upgrades over here. Number one, come over here to this little thing over here. We can upgrade our suit again for the inventory. So yes, let's uh, let's put one down in here. I don't want the empty hole. Again, it's gonna go up in price. It was five thousand. Now it's fifteen. It'll keep increasing. The more upgrades you get, the more expensive they will become. So keep in mind, gotta make that money. Then we have our suit upgrades. These are gonna be. I will show you guys the most important upgrade in the entire game. It is the backpack personal refiner. This thing is so useful. I use it for every one of my saves. It is the most important upgrade in No Man's Sky, in my opinion. My opinion, this is the one upgrade everyone should have installed in their uh, exosuit. You can install any of the other ones, you know, depending on your play style, but this is like, everybody should have this thing. But the way the tree works is, you have to buy the thing above it before you can get the thing below it. So I can't get the backpack or refiner yet because I have to unlock my hazmat gauntlets. That's okay, we'll spend 80 nanites and get that. So now we have that. Go back in here, go back to your tree. And now we can get our personal refiner. It's gonna cost us 360 nanites. Well worth it, totally worth it. I would say pick it up right now. And then another thing you can pick up to make a lot of money early on, to help you, I should say, make money early on, is the trade rocket. This is a cool rocket you can call in, like if you're on a planet, picking up a whole bunch of buried technology, or you're picking up a whole bunch of bones and your inventory is full. You can call in a trade rocket, it'll land right in front of you, and you can drop off a whole bunch of stuff to sell, and you'll get the money instantly, and the trade rocket takes off, it clears out your inventory. This is a very, very, very good investment. So another 90 nanites. Let's get that. We're do we're good. So we've gotten a whole bunch of cool upgrades out of there. This is our construction research station. So this is for your base building stuff. And this has tons and tons, probably close to hundreds and hundreds of base building parts on different pages. So if you just hit your right and left bumpers, you can go to different pages. But I mean, look at this. There's hundreds and hundreds of things in here that you can unlock. You're going to need to get some buried technology, the salvage data. You need a ton of it. And again, if you want to unlock it early, use your salvage data. If you don't, follow the storyline. You will unlock all of this stuff just by completing the story. I shouldn't say all of it. There is some of it that you have to unlock on your own, but you will get so much of this just, you know, from completing the story missions as rewards, they will give you so many of these blueprints, these pieces that it is not worth it unless you just don't want to, you don't care about the storyline, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about it, but look at all this. Look at all this stuff. Just pages and pages and pages of stuff. We have a farming stuff, but again, 
Once we get to the story missions with farming, this will unlock automatically. You don't even have to spend anything on it. I know I keep repeating that, but, but a lot of people think that you don't earn it. Like, you have to unlock it with... Uh, you have to buy it. You do not have to buy it. You get it for free if you complete the story. And then we have our starship upgrader guy. So this guy, he will give you all the different upgrades for your starship. And again, these are blueprints. These are things you can make and put in in addition to your regular upgrades. So these are definitely things you can look at to get. I would always say the Positron Ejector, my favorite weapon. You know, but you know, you do you, whatever you want to do. So yeah, yeah. And then we also have the portal area. This portal will take you anywhere you've been. So think of this like the uh, super duper version of the uh, teleporter at a space station. Because you can go to, not only can you go to the cool bases that are, you know, are uh, shown off. These are community bases for highlights. So uh, people can say, oh yeah, I want to go to this one. I want to go to that one. These are cool bases that people in the community have made. But also, it'll give, go back to any other system you've been to, any of your bases that you've built. So this is a very, very cool teleporter right here. I love it. Now let's go back and talk to Nada. I know this has turned into the uh, Space Anomaly uh, episode, but I think it's important to kind of walk through because a lot of people, they've never played it or they're just getting into it. You guys can kind of don't know or you don't realize there's some really cool stuff here. Nada and Polo drift between worlds and worlds. There are many. Have you seen them, traveler friend? Nada wishes they could. Nada regrets much. Traveler entity is free to make their own path. Find Artemis entity, explore with others, travel to great sites. Proceed as you will, traveler entity. We will aid you. Otherwise, others will aid you also, even if you seek the crimson lair. So this is kind of, it's not a lot, it's not locking you in, but basically this kind of tells you that this is the end of the tutorial. So now it is not going to teach you anything. You can just follow your own story, whatever you want to pick. And this is, We'll just change on what they give you as a bonus, but it doesn't really affect anything in the game. Like, it's not going to lock you in. Like, if you pick Artemis, it's not going to lock you into the storyline. Or if you pick Exploration, it's not going to end the story either. It just kind of gives you a bonus on the reward on what you get. So let's go with Exploration. Of course, Nada will mark your map with a great wonder, but take your time with your journey. Find your pattern. Speak to others on this station. They have things to offer you also. Return to us whenever you please, Traveler Entity. You are always welcome here. So as you can see, I'll get some rewards. Holy cow, look at this. Okay, so now I can go to my, uh, my, uh, my log. Now I have a whole bunch of missions here. We don't need this. Like It'll pin blueprints. I hate that. I wish they would not automatically do that. Get out of here. But yeah, now we have our main missions at the top and then our secondary stuff. So all our base building stuff is down here. You know, exploring different planets, community research. That is for our um, special missions from the Nexus. We can also do the Space Anomaly. That's what we're on right now. The Atlas Path is the Atlas Seed storyline. And then Alone Amidst the Stars. This might change, but this one right here, the symbol means it is the Artemis storyline, the main storyline for No Man's Sky. So now that we've done all that, let's go hang out and, oh, let, let's return to space and search for clues about Artemis. And there's a lot more on the space anomaly, so I would always suggest go explore. Talk to the different travelers on here because there's so much lore and backstory to No Man's Sky. But I want to kind of progress a little bit, so let's continue on. And we should get a call from some Artemis or someone saying they're Artemis. Let's see. Here we go. Known contact. There's Artemis. Where? Is there anyone out there? It's outside. It's something's wrong with what, what's going on, Artemis. I asked the stranger what is wrong. There's a moment's pause. The only sound I hear is the background hiss. Of cosmic radiation. You, you found me. There's so little light. I thought I'd never hear another soul again. I really did. 
How did you find my voice? I found his ship. I tell the stranger about the abandoned starship wreck and how I found their communicator ID in the distress beacon. I begin to mention the anomalous space station, but they cut me off. It's outside, but I think I'm safe. There are 16 of them. They look just like... What, what do we mean? What do you... 16 keeps popping up. What's going on with 16? Fear and confusion dance within the eyes of the stranger. After a few moments of silence, they turn to me, imploring. You don't know who you are, do you? You... And it cuts out. It lied to me. It lied to all of us. The sound cuts out, but their face lingers on, silent, before it too fades into nothingness. This must be Artemis, and they are clearly in need of help. I need to find a way to boost their signal. So now we need to boost their signal. We need to find a uh, booster. Oh, I hate that it, it, look at it, it switched me on, it switched my missions. Remember, it'll do that because, you know, they hate me. But let's go back to our main mission. You have to highlight whatever mission you want to play. It kind of sucks that it kicks you back and forth and all around, but sometimes you gotta just, you know, check your log to make sure you're on the same mission you want to stay on. So now let's scan. Oh, there's one over there. Look at that storm in the middle of space. I love it. Well, let's go to the hollow terminus. All right, we're getting close to it. So let's let's do a scan. I always like to scan before you land because if you do a scan, it will mark the nearby buildings. And so you don't have to really follow your marker. You can just go to the building probably like this right here. That looks like a, yep, that is a hollow terminus. And so it's going to mark that location, but we really need to come over here. So why not just land where we need to go anyway, right? So ridiculous. Look at that. Watch. And as soon as I get out, it'll mark this location over here. Yeah. Now look how beautiful. Yeah. It's almost like I knew where I was going. Dang it, game. Come on. Let's see if I can communicate with Artemis using this uh, big transmitter. Hopefully this works. I mean, you know, I know it works, but you know what I mean. <laughs> for those of us who have, or for those of you who have not played the game, I know that's what I was thinking when I first started playing. I'm like, oh man, what is this thing? This is pretty cool. It's a gigantic thing going on here. Look at this planet. It has a cool filter on it. Everything's like purple. All right. So we're going to need to fix this tower and we're going to need some sodium. We got enough sodium again. 24 out of 24. So we have 24 sodium and it needs 24. So we're good. Hollow terminus activated. Multiple signal sources available. The tower hosts a powerful transmitter designed to facilitate holographic communication across long distances. The extra power should allow me to reestablish the connection with Artemis. Let's do it. I try to locate Artemis's frequency, uploading the data from our previous communication. So now it should warm up. There we go. Look at this cool thing. I love that. Oh, look at this Artemis right there. Who's who's there? You. It's you again, isn't it? You really are real, aren't you? You aren't a dream? Yeah, I'm, I'm real. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's hard to think here. Something's wrong. It's easy to create a better reality when you have to. I thought you might be a dream. I'm sorry, I haven't heard another voice in so long. Not since I cut out the speaker from my exosuit. It said such terrible things. That is a cool aspect of it. Like your exosuit, the voice that's telling you, you know, like, you know, hazard protection low and all this other stuff. What if that went crazy and started saying weird stuff to you? That would be weird. I would love to see that kind of a storyline. Um, who are you, Artemis? The stranger smiles through the static. I'm just like you. You are a traveler of worlds, aren't you? Um, sh what do you mean by traveler of worlds? They do not respond with speech. They transmit a vision, a red star, and a fragile world. I do not understand the shapes within the whispers. I see life forms scattered to the far reaches of the galaxies. I see this stranger's first breath, yearning for the stars. I see myself slumbering in the crimson void, waiting for a dream of worlds. And through the darkness, I hear it said. Anomaly detected. Designation, Traveler. I need to wake up. What I showed you just now, it has haunted me since I awoke. 
You must recognize it too. Not really. We are the travelers, discoverer of worlds. From the moment you opened your eyes, you must have known you were not like the others. So did I. Before it be I became stranded here, I was on a journey to somewhere. To finally meet. It cannot be a coincidence that you found this signal. Tell me, do you still have the data from that crash ship? Yeah, let's do that. Let's mention Nada. Who? Please, I have to see that data. Don't toy with me. I don't have time. And that's how, yeah, it'll it'll recognize your choice, but if you... It basically just gives you a little bit more back lore, but it doesn't change the storyline, as you can see. Upload the data. I upload my exosuit's records, including the strange transmission I received and the data I found at the crashed vessel. Much of my equipment is damaged. I am alone, on foot, stranded on a sunless world. I don't even know how your signal is reaching me. But this ship you found, it belonged to me once. Perhaps there is hope after all. We need to work out where we both are. If you build a signal booster across the system, we should be able to triangulate your position. I'll be able to find my way out, and you'll be you'll get all the answers you seek. Okay, let's do it. Thank you, Traveler. You're going to save my life. You're going to find me. So... Now we need to make some uh, signal boosters, and we just got the blueprint to make a signal booster. We have to make signal boosters. We have to make three of them so we can triangulate where we are, and that, that'll give Artemis the location of where we are, we are at so he can find us, or more accurately, we can use our location to w figure out where Artemis is. So, in the next episode, we are going to be triangulating our system or our area, and we are going to find Artemis. So hopefully you guys liked the episode. If you did... Hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time.